My father always worked very hard. He had a beat up old truck on the weekend. He would haul stuff and everything. And he would drag me along and I'm 10, 12, 15 years old and I'm carrying stuff. One time he, he had a conversation with me about hard work. You know, he says, you are a very hard worker. But that brother of yours, I can't get him to do anything. He tells me he doesn't want to hurt his hands because he plays the piano. He said, he's never going to do anything with that piano. <laughs> he said. <laughs> you know, it's a hard times. We had rats and roaches and stuff in the house. It was kind of hard. Back in our kitchen, we had these kerosene stove and it caught fire and the whole wall, one wall in the kitchen was on fire. Back in those days, if you had a fire in the house and you called the fire department, they would wreck your house. Not only that, they would steal stuff from you, especially in the black community. They weren't no black firemen, they were all white. So my mother was not eager to call the fire department when we had the fire. So she had me take a, a two bucket, we went in the back and we loaded the bucket. I think my brother was with me, we handed her the bucket. Mom put that fire out. My mother really played the leading role, keeping us together. She was so encouraging to both my brother and I that future, our future would be greater, to be able to do great things. Just keep doing what you're doing. My job is to just help you any way I can, but just keep doing what you're doing, you're gonna be okay, you know, kind of thing. McCoy's first band was an R&B band, and they used to play teen dances. This guy used to come by our beauty shop. He sort of said, let me manage you. So the, one of the things he got us to go was the amateur night at what is called the Uptown Theater in Philly, which is like the Apollo is in Harlem. We got our little band together, and most of the acts were well, quite good, I thought, you know. But when we got on, we had that place rocking. And I was doing the conga drum, and everybody was dancing in the aisles. And we were playing Benny Green's uh, Blow Your Horn. And then they took the vote and we won amateur night. So I'm thinking we're gonna get 10 bucks or something, you know, all of us in there. So this guy says, the manager said, well, you know, they only give about 12, 15 dollars, so I'm gonna give each of y'all $2 and some hot dogs. Our pride and our sense of accomplishment overrode even the fact that he robbed us. <laughs> so we, we, we stopped letting him come by the, the house after that. The one thing, I, I had this high sense of morality. I, I, was a, I was a church kid, but you know, I'm not one of these kids who always preaching to other people, but just that I want to do the right thing. First time I heard my brother say, damn, I literally went in the other room and cried because I thought he was going to go to hell. <laughs> so I want to say, what's the matter with you? He said, McCoy just said, damn, he's going to go to hell. <laughs> In my close circle, we had a group called the Jive Five, which was me and my buddies. We, we partied on the weekends and did all, you know, we were socially very developed. But intellectually and, and uh, politically, we ain't know from nothing. But when we saw what happened in um, Little Rock, where these mobs of racists were harassing little children trying to go to school there, and we saw you know, the growing demonstrations around the South, around education. We realized that we had to break, this thing had to be breaking down. And my friend Robert, uh, after seeing uh, Little Rock, I we were on our way somewhere and he said, you know, man, this is something I can't get over. How these people down in the South hate us so much. Why do they hate us so much? What do we do to them? You know, kind of thing. And so that dilemma he was facing, there was a lack of a political uh, analysis of it, but he was right. Why do they hate us? What did we do wrong? We're the victims, you know? We've been the poorest, we've, the, we've lived the hardest life, but they hate us, why, you know? We had a clubhouse, our, our little socialist group, uh, which was uh, inspired and ran and really uh, um, guided by the Communist Party of the District of Eastern Pennsylvania and we call ourselves the Social Youth Union. And I remember when the big march came, we decided we were going to organize a busload from the neighborhood. We got such a response from the community. We literally had street meetings with sound equipment, telling everybody, 
Come on out. The big marches. Dr. King has called us to come to Washington, blah, blah, blah. Everybody go. We're going to have buses. Instead of one bus, we end up with three buses packed with community youth and youth from the SYU, Associates Youth Union. And it was such a profound experience that we could do that. I hadn't quite ever been in that involved in that kind of organization that, hey, this thing works. You can get people to do stuff, you know. And we went down there. I was sitting at the base of the Lincoln Memorial when Dr. King made the great speech. If you don't have a, a, a belief system and a foundation that's decent and clear and true, uh, it's hard to get through this life. But once you have it and you believe in it, it, it becomes a part of you. And you have to continue uh, to keep doing it. So. I thought at one time I would just stop, go to graduate school or something, get a degree and maybe uh, law school or something like that. But then came Angela Davis, you know, and how can I be, not be a part of that? And then came anti-apartheid movement, and then they asked me to be head of the New York District of the party. And then for, uh, I did that for 19 years as head of the New York District of the party. Then they asked me, you know, to run for office, and, and after a while, it just became come a part of your being. And I tell people who are religious, and they say, you know, I believe in the church. I said, but you know, we communists have a similar deep, deep understanding and belief. And it's not based on a metaphysical thing. It's based on the real world experience that you have, which theirs is too. But at the same time, uh, for me to march down the road for as long as I have, um, it's because my beliefs are a part of me. I'd be dishonest to myself if I didn't keep going.